edition of the Hot Seat. I'm Ray Motor from ACG, and as we do in the Hot Seat is we follow up with service provider and a lot of equity analysts after major announcement. And a few weeks ago, Cisco had a major announcement in the service provider edge routing space. Joining us today is Brandon Gibbs. How you doing, Brandon? Hi, Ray. Nice to meet you. Nice. Brandon is Senior Director for Product Management and Service Provider Edge Routing Group. And what we wanted to do in this announcement is a little bit in the hot seat, as we said, we got a question from a lot of service provider equity analysts, is give us a, a quick summary on the announcement on the ASR 9000. Okay. Thanks, Ray, for having me. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, so we introduced a few things with the new ASR 9K. Uh, first of all, we introduced a, a, an addition to the ASR 9000 family. It was a, a, what we call the ASR 9000 system. Um, what that comprises is a 96 terabit system, a network-wide edge-to-access model that includes a new ASR 9922 22-slot chassis, the ASR 9000V little access box, and then uh, network virtualization technology that we call NV. And on top of those, what we've announced are six new global customer deployments, including Tata, China Telecom, NTT Plala, Comcast, Cox, and FastWeb. So it was really all-encompassing uh, announcement. Right. Now, let's let's take a step back. If I remember correctly, I think it was either October 2008 uh, or around that time frame. You, you already had an announcement on the ASR 9000 where you actually even talked about 400 gigs back then. What is the difference here and what makes this special? And what does it make it move the needle there? Uh, so what care customers are telling us is they care about longevity of their network and their infrastructure. They care about long-term TCO. So what we announced originally was the ASR 9K system, or family rather, um, that allowed scalability per slot up to 400 gigs of bandwidth. Um, what we've announced with this new offering is a whole new system that revolutionizes the approach, but as a piece of that, we've scaled the capacity way, way up to 1.2 terabit per slot. Okay. So as part of that, what we had was a capacity per slot and line cards that we've continued to uh, grow over time. We've had three generations of line cards mm -hmm. since we first shipped. Uh, most recently, we announced a 200 gig line card, both a 2 port 100 gig and a 240 gig, 24 port 10 gig card. Okay, 24 port. Now, there was part of that announcement, correct me if I'm wrong, where you talked about 96 terabytes. Right. Uh, th there seems to be a little bit of confusion. I've had some equity analyst folks saying, oh, this is the 9,000 Vs accumulated, but it seems like it's a little bit different. Could you define the math a little bit because it seems like uh, yeah. people are somewhat confused on the Yeah, absolutely. So. You're absolutely right. It's not an aggregation of a whole lot of little 9,000 Vs. Those are actually outside of the bandwidth calculation because the whole premise of NV is that the intelligence and the TCO savings comes from the uh, you know host 9,000. Uh, so the 96 terabits comes from as follows, starting from the bottom up. Every uh, you know every one of these boxes, the 9922, has a capacity up to 1.2 terabits of capacity. Now this is industry leading. No one's come even close to this. So you take 1.2. Uh, terabit per slot times 20 actual line card slots. It's 22 slot box, but two of those are RPs. 20 line card slots, uh, that gets you 24 terabit. What NV offers us as a virtualization technology, it, it, at least in part, is the ability to take a pair of these boxes and link them together and treat them as one logical system. So effectively that gives you one control point, one management point, but 40 logical slots across the pair. And so 40 slots uh, times across the two boxes times 1.2 terabit each gives you 48 terabit, mm -hmm. and then it's multiplied by two for ingress and egress. For e traditional ingress and egress for the full duplex side. Exactly. Of now, part of the announcement, there was some innovations. Part of it regarding some of the virtualization. Where do you see some of the applications uh, for this uh, particular product? Okay. Um, I, I think when I, I think of a 96 terabit system. Uh, I think there's a couple things that drive that. One is massive bandwidth needs. I think massive endpoint growth and need for a significant amount of intelligence. Um, so um, from a bandwidth point of view, uh, our visual networking index, or BNI, is forecasting all IP traffic growth is going to grow 4x between now and 2015. And two-thirds of that bandwidth is going to be video-based. So video is going to be a key component that's going to drive um, the bandwidth growth overall. Um, and so that is one thing that, that really helps us drive a need to have a massively scalable system that, by the way, you don't need to replace every year or so, mm -hmm. unlike some of our uh, alternate vendor offerings. Mm -hmm. um, I think the second piece of that is going to be uh, about um, endpoint scalability. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, what pops to mind there is mobility. Mm -hmm. So you think about mobile uh, LTE growth, you think about mobile cell sites in the tens of thousands. If we can use this NV virtualization technology to turn tens of uh, and manage endpoints and tens of thousands of endpoints, I should say, into like a thousand or something. 
that's a massive savings for care. That goes right to the bottom line because that's a huge degree of, of simplification that is directly cost-based. And the third piece is about intelligence. We all know that massive growth of endpoints is going to drive a need for IPv6, and we're all out of IP addresses now. So uh, IPv6 growth um, and the ability to have seamless uh, scalability um, uh, for IPv6 is going to be key. And that's why as part of this announcement and part of our offerings, we've got IPv6 carrier-grade NAT translation in the ASR9000 system. We have it in the CRS3, uh, and we have it end-to-end -end across our portfolio. So that be, it's really that, that video-based bandwidth that becomes the endpoint growth and the intelligence, really, your mm -hmm. applications that drive that. Right. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, um, I did a video uh, interview with uh, Kelly Ayusia mm -hmm. on IPv6, and we had uh, customers all over the world. And, and that IPv6 transition is becoming uh, a critical part of their planning uh, because of the depletion and the rate that it's yeah, going. It's business continuity at this point. That's right, yeah, it's business continuity. Either you, you pay now or you pay a lot more later. Right. Let's talk about innovation. Uh, I mean, what are some of the innovations as part of the announcement? Um, well, I think NV is one of the key ones uh, that allows us the ability to not only virtualize the, the head end aggregation, but as I've said, virtualize the access layer. Um, we, um, you know, the, we estimate that this, uh, you know, gives us seventy percent of, um, of TCO savings over a multi year period. In fact, we believe that you have payback of less than a year for the um, capital cost of the ASR9000 system because of the operational savings. So 70% savings over the next nearest competitors. That's one massive right. innovation. And being able to scale the bandwidth of that system up, 96 terabit in aggregate, capacity of 1.2 terabit a slot, and uh, shipping this year 240 gig line cards, two mm -hmm. by 100 gig and trade over 10, no one can do this today. Right. Okay. Now, in the beginning part, you talked about certain customers. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the customer reactions uh, after this announcement? It's extraordinarily positive reaction. Um, the ability to have that level of scale and 70% OPEX savings is really an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. Normally, when vendors talk to customers, it's all about speeds, it's feeds, it's ports, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but having a business-level value proposition, such as what Envy offers, is extraordinarily compelling. So what we're getting are carriers coming to us and saying, how can I you know, uh, uh, architect my network to take yeah. advantage of this. How, how can I really take advantage of this 96 terabit simplification of the access um, and extension to remote sites using the 9000D? So that's been like, extraordinarily gratifying. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Now, uh, as we do in the hot seat, we always address what's really shipping. If you could walk us through what's available today and what are the plans for some of the other uh, products that were part of this announcement. Sure. Um, so, as I said, we announced a few pieces of it. The 200 gig line cards are going to be announced today. And I am cognizant that one of our competitors just mm -hmm. announced uh, that they're going to have 200 gig cards, but that won't be till mid of next year. So mm -hmm. they're clearly playing, playing catch up, mm -hmm. not only in terms of line cards lagging us by at least six months, um, but also um, having the ability to scale to 400 gig, which is what we announced in 2008. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have those cards this calendar year. Um, in the first half of next year, we're going to deliver the NV virtualization technology and the you know 9000 V access mm -hmm. plus the 9922 chassis. So it becomes an overall system announcement. Now, what, why is it important to make these announcements now? Uh, the reason is because carriers need to make multi-year buying decisions. Mm -hmm. This is such a revolutionary, compelling solution. Mm -hmm. um, having the level of engagement with customers so that they, back when we announced 2008 400 gig, now it's 1.2 terabit. Giving that level of knowledge to our carrier customers is key. They need to bake that into their buying cycles, to their to their planning mm -hmm. process, and they need time to, to take uh, advantage, frankly, in their own organizations uh, to, with the NV virtualization. Right. So that, that's why we okay. spoke up now. Right. Well, Brandon, you're officially off the hot seat. Thanks, Ray. This is Ray Motor with Brandon Gibbs. Thank you very much.